Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and I've got some great news for the Godovians among us. Godovians. Yeah, I'm going to go with that. Anyways, Godot users, there is a new version for you. Uh, this is probably going to be the second to last version before Godot 4 finally arrives, at least fingers crossed. Originally, this was going to be a 3.2 point something revision, and there's just so much in it that they decided to bump this out to a 3.3 release, and we've got some more details on their upcoming release schedule. We'll see that in just a second. But Basically, if you are working on Godot 3 point something and uh, you're not going to be publishing, say, in the, a year away from now at the least, Godot 4 is probably out of sight. We'll get back to that in a minute. So if you are using an existing 3 point something port, you're probably going to want to upport to this particular version. By the way, this is Godot 3.3 in action. You can download it from GodotEngine.org. Uh, one of those things you should definitely be aware of is their servers are a little on the slow side. It took quite a while to download, which is funny because Godot is like 60 megabytes in size. So since it is a new release, expect it to take a little bit of time. By the way, what you're seeing in front of you, this is the uh, third person sample, uh, completely open source. You can grab it on GitHub if you are so inclined. All right, so we're going to now go take a look at what is in the release notes for this particular version of Godot. We're also going to talk a little bit about their new versioning system. And uh, yeah, so let's go jump over there right now. And here we are. All right, so Godot 3.3 has arrived. Uh, focus on optimization and reliability. Uh, this was, again, going to be uh, 3.2.4, but so much got kind of bundled into it that it became 3.3. Um, so that's the kind of the talk about right here. Uh, it is a recommended upgrade for all users. There are stability improvements, performance improvements in this particular version. Uh, in terms of long-term support, there is going to be one more version of the Godot 3.x branch in terms of Godot 3.4. No release date of that as of yet. Uh, but basically, some of the features from Godot 4 are being backported, especially like security fixes, performance fixes, that kind of stuff that can be backported. And the reality is when Godot 4 finally shares, it's going to break quite a few things. So if you're looking at actually shipping your game in, say, the next year, uh, you're going to probably want to stick with Godot 3.x. And if you're using Godot 3.x, something earlier, you're going to want to upgrade to 3.3. If you want to support them, they have details, uh, become a patron, and so on. And now we get to the meat of it. What is new in this particular release? Well, let's look at the TLDR version, and then we could jump in in a little bit more detail. Of course, I will link this article down below, so if you want to uh, jump in and get more, you can do so. So first off, platforms. The Godot editor on the web. I've covered that in a video in the past. You can actually run Godot entirely in the web browser if you so wish, which is pretty cool. Uh, Android app bundles, subview signing. iOS has a new plugin API. HTML5 has uh, Threads GD native and audio worklet. Uh, the thread support is definitely a nice improvement in that regard, and so is GD Native. It's going to make it easier to do cross-platform uh, plugin development for the Godot engine and have it work on all platforms, including the web. And macOS has ARM64 builds and code signing because, of course, they do because Apple is Apple. Uh, then we got Core. Um, so, by the way, you do have to do code signing. It's a mandatory thing. You also have to do 64-bit, so those are both mandatory requirements. Uh, at the core level, threading API was modernized, uh, dynamic BVH for rendering and Godot physics, raise errors when accessing deleted objects in debug, uh, unified 2D batching, that's going to be a big one. So if you created a 2D game, uh, what you can do is have a bunch of sprites kind of batched into a single draw call instead of a multiple, uh, multiple calls. This batching is almost always faster. There's also a new CPU light mapper and more rendering improvements. And then we've got physics, many fixes to one-way collisions, is the kinematic body collisions, cylinder collision shapes for Godot physics. And this one's really nice. Editor, you can now copy and paste nodes. That's going to make um, moving, migrating, refactoring a lot nicer. I improved inspector sub-resource editing, in, uh, import presets configuration, 3D editor improvements, and detect external scene changes. And then other areas of improvement, there is the new FBX importer. Uh, that seemed like it was like a long time ago, but I guess we've been working on this 3.2 branch forever. Uh, so there is an improved FBX importer. I tested it out. It is improved. Uh, Web XR support for virtual reality games. So if you want to make VR games for the browser, you have that ability now. On the topic of VR, OpenXR is quickly turning into the standard for um, VR AR development. Uh, there is an OpenXR plugin. Uh, you, can do, you can now load and playback MP3 files. There's a new aspect ratio container for control nodes and mini map support in graph edit. 
So that's kind of the top level version. We get into a little bit more detail. A lot of it's pretty self-explanatory, so I'm going to skim through this stuff pretty fast. Anything that requires a little bit more clarification, I will jump into. First off, if you want to check out ed um, the Godot engine in your browser, go to editor.godotengine.org. Uh, you see, blah, blah, blah. Oh, don't show me anything. Uh, you send up the file you want to check, and then you can uh, start editing right there. So you send up a zip file of your project. Uh, oh, I didn't mean to start the editor. I meant to load the example. But you'll see here, you've got the loader. We'll go back to that. So we'll try that one as an example. I believe that's going to download. But their servers are getting clobbered. So again, I I'll stop here because I don't really want to wait on their servers or anything. But this is pretty much a full-blown version of Godot. You can switch between the project manager up here, the editor, which is full-on Godot right here once you've got a project loaded. And then finally, your game view is available here. We can also shut things down using the X there. So that is a nice new feature. Let's head on back over here so that you can now run it in the web. It's available at uh, editor.godotengine.org. If you want to see that in action, but you don't want to check it out yourself, I have done a video on using it. Um, Android app bundling subview and signing. Uh, so app bundle uh, is a publishing format enables more efficient distribution of Android apps. Uh, so that's nice. I think it also allows you to do easier patching, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Google Play uh, recommends AAB since they enable Play Store to distribute only preferred native libraries for the ABI of a device. So they don't have to send up, you know, versions for s devices that you don't particularly want to target here or that the end user doesn't have. So you don't end up with a lot of bloat on it. Um, other features have been implemented such as subview embedding uh, for the cutout notches on Android 9 Plus. Uh, we've got uh, Google Play required. They disable the request legacy external storage attribute. Godot will currently still need this attribute as support for blah, blah, blah. Oh, okay. Um, iOS, again, uh, new plugin API. Uh, oh, so it, they introduced it for the Android plugin in 3.2.2. Uh, it's implemented the same interface for iOS now. Uh, we've got thread improvements, GD native, and audio worklet improvements, uh, which is definitely nice. One notable change is there's now support for both threads and GD native in the HTML5 platform port. Uh, that should definitely open up your options if you're working on HTML5 targets. Uh, let's see what else we got. Oh, I missed a line. Fabio also greatly improved support for game pads and virtual keyboards in the web export. So web should just generally be nicer to work with. You have more options there. You have threading support and better uh, keyboard and game pad support. Uh, again, Mac OS, you have ARM64 build and code signing. Again, Apple keeps moving the bar on what is required. Uh, the cool thing here is now that you can support for the 64-bit, the ARM64 architecture, which is the new M1 Max. And I don't really watch the uh, Apple development releases, but I believe there's even more M1 devices out there right now, including, I think, an iPad now, but I might be, I might be talking out my butt on that one. Um, so more support for... Um, Apple publishing and making things run well for you there. Uh, we've got a modernized multi-threading APIs. Uh, so after doing this work for the master branch, uh, backported this modernization of the multi-threaded APIs to the 3.3 branch. So this is another one of those examples of something that was developed for four that worked out. So they moved it back to 3.3. Uh, it builds upon Godot's recent adoption of C++11 and beyond, um, which provides us with more reliable cross-platform implementations than the one we use so far. Uh, it's interesting. They're up to C++17 code uh, in master now. That's nice to see. Um, help fix some issues which could affect specific platforms as well as improve overall reliability and performance. Uh, so that one's nice. Also probably going to be the most breaking of the changes that have happened, so do be aware there. Uh, then we've got uh, Dynamic BVH for rendering and Godot physics. Uh, all right, I'm trying to remember BVH. BVH is an acronym. For me, it's bio something humans, the file format. So uh, I'm not 100% what the BVH acronym stands for, uh, but it's a match to the first partitional uh, spatial partitioning, which is basically dividing up the space into... Um, it, it, it's the way a world is structured, basically. It's like you used to have something like a BSP, which is binary space partition. Uh, BVH seems to be another alternative to that, but I do not actually off the top of my head know that acronym. So I apologize on that one. Uh, you can raise errors when accessing deleted objects and debug. We now have, again, that 2D batching. Uh, it was originally implemented in 3.2.2 for GLES2, overhauled the system. So now it works with GLES3. If you are doing a 2D game, you should just get a performance boost by enabling that. So that's definitely nice. Uh, the new CPU light mapper is in place. Um, so back in summer 2019, we already knew Godot 4 would feature a completely new GPU light mapper, but it required Vulkan and 4.0 still so far away. So they've done the CPU light mapper for Godot 3.3. Um, 
And we've got uh, more rendering improvements, a new software scanning for mesh instances, optimized transform propagation for hidden 3D objects, uh, configurable amount of lights per object. This is actually really nice. There used to be a limit of eight, object, eight lights per object. Now, if you're on a Meteor machine, you can actually upgrade that to four times higher at 32 lights. Uh, improved PCF shadow rendering in GLES2 and uh, various light culling fixes. In the physics world, uh, one-way collisions were improved, uh, fixes to kinematic body collisions, uh, cylinder collision shapes for Godot physics, and then we've got node copy and pasting, and that is definitely going to be nice. So you can see here, copy the nodes tree, and then paste the node tree. You're getting the entire hierarchy copy over. This is going to make refactoring much, much nicer. It's also going to make it so you can write the worst spaghetti code ever, so do use it properly, please. Uh, improved inspector sub-resource editing. So you know how you can drop into a sub-resource and then down and down and down. You now have better editing. It was implemented for four, but again, it was backported. Uh, you can set the color and contrasting in the options if you so wish. So it makes it easier to see which resource you're editing. I did not mean to click that, but I did. Uh, so that's nice. Uh, import presets configurations. When you add an asset to the Godot project, most of them get imported to the engine's internal format on the fly. There are some pre-existing types for all asset types. You can define which presets will be used for all resource types. Um, that's definitely a nice new feature. Uh, added a new keep import mode. Uh, it was added to configure specific files to be left as is. Uh, 3D editor improvements, dynamic infinite 3D grid. Uh, and by the way, if you want more details, there is more details than what we're going into here. Much improved 3D rotation gizmo and a better 3D selection gizmo. Let's take a look at it right here. So here we are in select mode. Okay, there is the new rotation. Not 100% certain what is new here, to be honest. Uh, but... Uh, yeah, that I, I, I'm not sure what the improvements are, to be honest. Uh, it, it rotates. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, so that that's new there. Not sure what else to do. Uh, detect external scene changes. GDScript had some changes. So no big change for GDScript in this release. Um, there's going to be a rewrite and optimization of GDScript in Godot 4. By the way, that is going to have a lot of breaks. But there have been a number of uh, bug fixes as well as... Uh, Preview color constraints in the autocomplete format. Uh, so you can actually see the predefined. Okay. Uh, C sharp users will benefit from a redesign of solution build output panel. Uh, improved FBX importer. That one is definitely nice. Importing and exporting assets is always nasty. Uh, so the better your importer works, the easier your life normally is. Uh, current state, the new importer works quite well for FBX assets, authored in Maya. There are known issues with other FBX models that are currently being addressed and should be fixed in the upcoming 3.x release. And I believe this one actually started life as uh, assimp, and then they stripped like 90% of the code out and then worked from there. Uh, OpenXR support, we talked about that earlier on. MP3 loading and playback, that's nice. Uh, before it used to be just Aug Vorbis, and MP3 used to be a problematic format, but now it is basically in the public domain and, and there's no real issues there. So that is an improvement as well. And uh, mini map support, as you can see right there, quick way to navigate around in the visual scripting. And if you want to learn more, do be sure to check out the full release notes will be linked in the uh, linked article down below. So anyways, that is Godot 3.3. Quite a bit to love. A lot of the things that we are waiting for Godot, ha, ha, ha. You even say it by accident. I don't even mean it to be a pun. But a lot of things that we've been waiting for all along are now in here. Uh, so that's nice. The things that you don't necessarily have to wait for. But of course, Godot 4 is on the horizon with things such as the Vulkan renderer uh, and so on. On that topic... There is details on how their versioning is going to go, blah, blah, blah. It, it's pretty much in the weeds. But what is most important or interesting here is their timeline. So Godot 3.3 uh, is April, which we saw today. Um, it will receive fixes for bugs and security platform issues, as well as backward compatibility user enhancements. 3.4 uh, is at beta level, receives new features, as well as bug fixes while under development. So if you're going to be developing a project right now, you're going to want to work with 3.3. Uh, in Q2 or Q3, we'll get Godot 3.4. And then Godot 4, the ongoing question is, when will Godot 4 be released? And the answer is 2021, maybe. Uh, so we've got a little bit more details on it down here. As for the upcoming Godot 4, we can only say that we aim for a 2021 release, but any closer estimate is likely hard to uphold. Uh, so alphabets, uh, alphabets, alphabets, uh, alpha builds will be published as soon as the main features for Godot are finalized. So that's something to be aware of. I would assume, in all honesty, 
Uh, add six months to that, we're probably looking early to mid-2022. But I, I've got nothing to go off. That's just my guess. But I think my guess is pretty accurate. So anyways, if you are wondering about the future of Godot, there it is right there. So in uh, two to three months, we should see a beta of Godot 3.4 out there. Uh, this one is going to continue to receive support for quite a while. So it is a good one to start your project on. And Godot 4, they're hoping for 2021 and an alpha hopefully soon. But I would probably realistically expect 2022. So what do you think? Godot 3.3. Anything in there that you're really excited about? Let me know. Comments down below. And I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.